Hi, this is Roger from Kanka Labs and a short introduction to our new uh, AM ferrite rod antenna kit because it comes in separate pieces. And uh, first of all, um, we have uh, two coils. Uh, this one is for the long wave receptions. It's a bit fiddly to put it onto uh, the ferrite rod. You have to press here these two tabs together and then it will get over onto the ferrite rod. Here we have the medium wave coil and it's also a bit fiddly but in the end you will be able to get it over. You can uh, change the inductance um, in to some degree by shifting it more to the middle or more to the um, edge. Um, the inductance becomes uh, greatest when uh, the coil one coil is in the middle and it becomes smallest if it's here at the edge. But uh, the two coils for long wave and medium wave reception should not be very close together otherwise they uh, do influence uh, themselves. And you also get supplied uh, two little um, standoff uh, clips um, but you have uh, if you want to use them you have to make um, fitting holes for yourself into the case or the PCB where you want to use them. So these are the um, parts the AM antenna kit consists of. But there's one important thing, not all, as you can see, uh, the uh, coils consist of Litz wire. Uh, you even have a coupling coil here in uh, green or green-blue uh, for the medium wave coil. Um, they are not all tinned at the end and that's um, uh, and a very important thing if you want to use um, then you have to tin them by yourself and um, that's uh, not absolutely straightforward because you have to watch out that every single strand of the Litz wire is um, tinned and there are two classical ways to do th this. Now the Litz wire is still uh, with um, silk uh, on the outside but I don't know how it's called silk braided or however and um, in with mo modern Litz wire it, it consists of um, copper wire of course uh, copper Litz wire and uh, each uh, single strand of the uh, copper wire is coated uh, formerly um, it was enamel um, but uh, modern ones use uh, polyurethane and polyurethane has the um, uh, it melts or evapor evaporates at temperatures above 350 degrees Celsius. So uh, f the first and usually sufficient uh, way is just take your soldering iron, set the temperature to 400 degrees Celsius. You must be absolutely sure that you're above 350 and remember what your, um, what your uh, display uh, or setting knob says how the temperature is. It, uh, you can't be 100% sure that this is uh, correct. Um, just measure it with a thermocouple uh, thermometer, uh, which, we, which we have a separate video um, uh, and have available at our shop. Now, then you take a blob of, um, of uh, solder, and it should be, of course, be electronic solder with a high degree of flux. In this case, uh, we have 3% uh, flux uh, inside the uh, solder. This is even um, a lead-free solder. Uh, if you have it available, use um, standard leaded solder, lead tin uh, solder. And then um, you make it like this way. You take a blob of a fresh uh, solder and then you can see um, you have to try it a few times because 
uh, first of all, the silk is charring and um, uh, you should repeat this with always with fresh solder. It must be fresh because of the uh, flux inside until you're really sure that you have tinned all the single strands of the Litz wire at least for I would say one centimeter long. So that's one way and uh, with the silk uh, it's, it's not perfect and not very easy especially here with this uh, thin uh, Litz wire for the long wave um, uh, coil. But I'll show you the classical, the really classical method just in a second. So the classical method works this way. Uh, you heat the, um, the Litz wire with a normal gas lighter and then when it's hot you have to stick it into a pot of pure ethanol alcohol. Ethanol is uh, the drinking alcohol. Of course you shouldn't use any uh, drinking spirits because they are contaminated with um, with other ingredients. Uh, you could perhaps use vodka because vodka is usually pure ethanol alcohol plus water. Uh, in Germany we call um, the uh, D, what we call denaturalized um, ethanol or in German uh, spiritus. Um, uh, that's the one uh, which you cannot drink uh, because there's some stuff inside that makes it, uh, well, undrinkable uh, for humans. Uh, anyway, uh, get either pure ethanol or denaturalized uh, ethanol. And um, what happens is when you heat uh, the Litz wire with a lighter um, you get a layer of copper oxide and when you put copper, hot copper oxide into ethanol there is a well-known chemical reaction because the ethanol alcohol reduces uh, the copper oxide to pure copper. So when you do th this uh, you should e perhaps very cautiously try to get rid of the uh, silk braiding on the outside just with your fingernails but be very careful not to hurt a, even a single of one of the single Litz wire uh, strands. Now uh, and you have to be very quick and of course very cautious because now we have an open flame near to pure ethanol and so you should this do this with protection goggles on in a well ventilated room um, and have a fire extinguisher uh, at, at hand because it, uh, you can really qu quite quickly start a fire. Now let's hope that I don't do this. Just heating up and immediately putting it into uh, the ethanol alcohol and now we have uh, we, we should have clean a clean copper surface and this should be really easy to uh, tin. You can probably see it very well on the screen but now we get a near perfectly tinned um, end of the Litz wire. So uh, either you use uh, just heavily um, um, electronic solder with a great uh, content of uh, flux. Remember to set your soldering iron to 400 degrees, uh, at least well above 350 degrees. Or you use the classical method of um, heating uh, up the uh, Litz wire with a gas lighter and immediately putting the hot, still hot, Litz wire into ethanol. So that these are the two classical methods of um, tinning Litz wire perfectly. So that was it for today. Just a short introduction to our new AM antenna ferrite rod kit. Thanks for watching. Until next time. Bye from Roger. Bye from Kankalab.